Hi, my name is Nick and I want to show you how you can repair STL files using Blender. Um, you don't need to be a Blender export expert export <laughs> expert to do this. You simply need to follow this little tutorial and you should get a pretty good idea on what you need to do. So I prepared a file earlier. Let's go and grab it. It's a STL file and I'm going to assume it's broken. Well, I broke it, so it is it is um, no good, but uh, to check it, there's a built-in um, feature in Blender to do that. So go to user file, user preferences, add-ons, scroll down to mesh, and then look for mesh 3D print toolbox, and then if it isn't, click it, um, and that will make it active. Um, if you're new to Blender and you want to use your left mouse button, you're going to need to change that. We might as well do that now. To go to input and then select with it'll probably look like this so select with left you can keep it on right if you I want to learn blender but just for this one I'm going to be using left so let's then click save user settings get out of that oh that's what I forgot to do sorry guys I meant to turn on my screencast keys there we go let's That's what I want to do. Position. There we go. That's what I want to do. I just want to make sure. There we go. And it's fade out time. Three. Let's. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I should have set that up beforehand. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, make sure your object is highlighted um, and then we probably want to go into ob into edit mode let's we're in object mode at the moment let's so click on uh, this button here object and click edit and the shortcut for that is the tab key so it should say tab there it does but what it, it's also using text 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 24 display Icon, mouse icon, text. Okay, never mind. Um, there we go. So I'm panning around using the middle mouse button, as you can see here. When I left click, when I left click over something, it can select it. And that's what we set up before. And to go back, I'm just, just clicking on my, um, I'm lifting with my left, and then clicking with my right mouse button. Probably because I have it set to similar to 3ds Max, which is my main 3D program. Um, I'm slowly moving over to Blender and ever so slowly. <laughs> so I make lots of mistakes in Blender, but it's simply from muscle memory. But anyhow, we're, uh, we're in edit mode. So we need to find the, the I don't know what you call this, the add-on that um, we uh, activated. And Probably what I should have told you to do as well is go, let's go back into that. Let's go back into the add-ons and we we'll click the drop-down box here. You can actually open up the documentation to it, and this is um, a really handy thing. And it'll allow you to go through and read exactly what these, um, what everything does in this particular. Um, it'll tell you about the sharpness, the overhangs, how to fix, and how to do everything. But it's much easier if I, if I also tell you. So do that um, and just close it back down again and yeah so that's going to tell you that if you click on here it'll give you the volume of the object and that's great if you're using a, a bureau service and you want to know and they want to charge you per volume um, then you'll be able to sort of say well it's 46 whatever it is cubed um, it's probably centimeters something like that or it's area and you can check with to see if it's solid uh, if it has intersections, um, has thick its thickness, whether it has sharp edges, and these are all things you can set. And the overhang, uh, I leave most of these alone. But overhang um, is, is similar. It's for checking um, if you're going to do uh, FDM 3D printing. You can check the overhang angle, which is, um, I don't know. I use Simplify 3D, and I leave mine at 45 degrees. But it has lots of other. Um, things you can set um, let's just set I've already set it but let's set it again an output path 
I just set mine to the desktop just to make life easier. So when we export it, which we can export in different formats, but basically we want um, SDLs. Um, this little arrow here, or I think it's an arrow, will apply scale settings on exit. Now that's a, that's a bit of a complicated one to go into, so I won't, but click that anyhow. Basically, we, all we really want to do is hit check all. And when we do that, it pretty well straight away brings up everything that's um, wrong with it. Now, I made this file before and I made a real mess of it, so I had to go in and clean up all these things. But I think they were out of the scope of this, and I just wanted to show you this one, which is the non-manifold edges. Um, I think I might make more videos on this a bit later on, on more complicated things, just depending on feedback I get. But if you click on this button while we're in edit mode, it'll actually highlight all the issues with this. And you can see they're in orange. And basically they're all non-manifold and they're talking about edges and I, what I did was I simply went through and deleted some faces off um, of some of these so four edges make up a face in in 3d modeling um, there's eight and there's another four there that makes 12 and the beauty of um, of this program is if you simply going to hit go in here and hit make manifold instantaneously it's fixed all those issues up now this is, is a simple um, this is a very simple model and the issues I had with it are fairly simple but it can be as easy as that to repair your files so um, I hope you found this helpful so um, let's just let's actually export it as well um, we can hit check all again and it should make all that disappears and like I said, it has 67 overhanging faces, and they're there to show you where you might want supports. Um, I've never used supports in round holes, I'd, I've never needed to, but if you want to use supports in your 3D application, that's the 45 degree uh, limit that it's talking about. So, obviously there's one on the bottom, but you obviously wouldn't worry about that. So hit the tab key to go back into uh, object mode, and that shows up down here. Edit. So your mouse cursor has to be in the screen when you do anything as well, just in case. So I'm just hitting tab. Um, and then we can hit export and it will take that path you set before and export it out to the to the directory you set. Now I hope that wasn't too confusing or at least gave you a start point. If you have any questions, just ask them in the um, in the boxes below and I'll do my best to answer them. Like I said before, I'm a 3DS Max expert, I'm not a Blender expert, so forgive the umming and ahhing and the indecision with, with Blender. Um, I know a lot about 3D but not a lot about Blender and if you want to learn Blender I think that's a brilliant idea. It, it's a huge Swiss Army knife of things to do but stick to one, stick to something like modeling um, and strictly modeling. Forget the um, the timeline down the bottom, I must have turned it off or something, or I'm dragging on the wrong thing here, there we go. And that's the animation timeline, you can forget about that, close that window completely down and out of the way, <coughs> excuse me, you can always come back to it. Um, everything you do is outputted in this little window here. Um, one thing I wanted to quickly show you is I modified someone's script, and it used to be called Simple Align, I modified it called Simply Align too and it will move things around but I'm going to make a uh, another video on that later on so I just wanted to just quickly show that off okay thanks for watching I'll talk to you and see you next time